seven pallets of brick take up half the bed of a semi truck get the root come on i was gonna have to pull it out you're saving me a ton of labor that's some pavers quite a bit of it so i'm going to be laying the entire side of my house into a kind of like a secondary driveway so i've had grass here forever that's quite a bit of a slope I need to level some stuff out um, years ago i filled in this right here you can actually see by the fence i made a mini retaining wall with just some two by fours started out with one and then i, then I did two and that's probably 10 years ago it's been holding up but now i want to plow it all out um, make a little brick retaining wall with some scrap bricks spread down some sand that's what all these sandbags are right here for and lay down some pavers so one of the first steps is actually pulling up the sod so i can get it I actually have to bring down the level a little bit so i have room for a little bit of sand and the pavers so sod cutter that i built in another video was the best idea so we'll just pull that out i actually need to add dirt there but i need to bring it down here and we'll play around leveling it with sand and everything else bring you guys along one of the most complicated parts is just leveling twice so you got to level the dirt to within about a half to one inch so then you can put the sand down and then get your final level so you need to your base nice and firm and level so i'm playing around with that dug it down just a little too far should be the thickness of that two by four is what I figured. So about three inches low right there. We'll get it there. Not bad, good job. So I spent several days leveling it out with the tractor and by hand, and then I built a little retaining wall, really not part of the video, but. So now I've compacted it. I've driven back and forth over it with the tractor to help compact it. You can actually tell a big difference. So, because the number one thing you don't want to do with pavers is dig up new soil, but I have a lot of new soil. All oh, this is new soil, kind of disturbed soil, I guess, but it's compact down there good. You can't even shovel dig it almost, but it's hard packed, ran the vibrator over it, packed down. So the next step is it's level within, you know, about maybe half inch. So we're gonna put down some sand, all those sandbags right there. We're gonna put down about an inch of sand and level it out. And move the pavers back as we go using this as our edge so that's the next step so my spacers for my th sand thickness are just some pvc pipes one inch and we'll just throw down some sand and then we're going to use that two by four to screed it now you want to make sure you compact the sand as well if you do it loose what's going to happen is as soon as you put the pavers down they're going to sink too much and not be level so you want to make sure use this two by four to compact them. I'm on the home stretch of laying them, but I want to say that that's still not the end. I actually have to cement in both sides. Well, actually not this side against the house. Up there against the grass I have to. And this whole edge. I have to cement this entire last row to these bricks that I have.
in total 65 feet from the back to the sidewalk up there. Um, left with about inch and a half gap along here. I want to use that as an expansion because I don't ever want it to push against this wall. I want it to push this way. So I actually put a piece of wood down there. So it'll be a cushion and to take up some of the space for the sand. You can't have too much sand. So um, that's what that'll do. It's against the house. You won't even see it. Um, up here, I ran into a little bit of an issue because I don't want to cement these in because they have roots. So roots are going to push and grow and stuff like that. So what I actually did was I staked them. I just put wooden stakes down in just to hold those and then I'll backfill them with sand. So these on this side are going to move and when the tree decides to get bigger roots and everything else, you know, the stuff can move around and I can put new blocks in, notch them, something to that effect. But this whole edge is cemented along with that edge. But over this distance, this should only expand maybe about, not even a quarter of an inch, maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch. The other thing is, so both sides of this are cemented. I didn't run into one issue. I have a water main, not for my house, but for a good part of the neighborhood right there. So I ground in where it was and ground in water and it's under there and I will not sand. I cemented these outside blocks are cemented in so they shouldn't move. Um, and then I will leave sand out of this. It'll still be a little bit difficult to pull up because dirt and debris and some sand will push into it, but we'll get there. Good enough. I like the smooth look better than bringing it up to the surface. But now it's one of the final steps. Leaf blow it off and we just pack dry sand in. Easy enough, right? There you go, just a uh, wash off. Try to wash off the surface. The surface holds sand as well. So, but try not to wash it out of the cracks. Boom. I didn't show you much of the retaining wall because it's kind of makeshift. Um, it's just bricks. So it's just a bunch of bricks that I stacked up and cemented, just made a brick wall. Um, added some anchors back further in just to help, you know, make the retaining wall. It's about 18 inches peak right here and it tapers down to, to nothing back there and um, nothing up here. There's been a couple months. It's all, I've been parking on it, driving on it. Put a motorhome over here, been four wheelers, tractors, Truck parks over here. It's been fantastic. Been leaking oil on it. You know, there's some oil stains. Doesn't matter. It's a driveway. But just kind of wanted to tell you what I paid for it between this and I did over there as well. So 
once a year, Home Depot, Lowe's, usually in the spring, sell these pavers for a quarter a piece. They take a, a loss on them because um, they expect you to buy sand and everything else. I'm cheap, so I got all the sand for free from my city. We were flooding, so they're giving out free sandbags instead of paying the six bucks that Lowe's wanted for them. All together between this and that over there, I paid about 1300 bucks uh, with cement and everything. I'm maybe I'm 1400 bucks total to do all this, which if I did it in cement, if I paid somebody just do it in cement, it would have been eight grand probably, maybe even 10 grand somewhere in there. Prices right now are just stupid for everything. Um, I did get a quote on how much it would have cost to do this if they bought the pavers and everything and it would have pushed, you know, with the little retaining wall, my price would have pushed about $30,000, 25 to $30,000 because there is so much labor labor involved in doing these things. Um, you can see it just been storing junk and leaking oil on old cardboard. So I've had a lot of neighbors and stuff stop by and ask me about these and, um, what it's like to do this and I want to tell I told every single one of them it's four times the work than doing cement even if you know even if you're finishing the cement yourself this is four times the work and why it costs four times as much to do pavers as it does cement but it looks fantastic so thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed that little clip hey ginger here comes a stick come get it there haul it off get it Come on, get it out of here. Haul it off. Nope, get it. Come on. Get it out of here. Move it. Come on. Oh, that's my leg. Okay, go. There we go. Good job.